I'm just about finished up in this mix here and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a, a quick video about using aux tracks in Cakewalk. I know there's a, a lot of questions about this and they're mainly centred around what's the difference between buses and aux tracks and hopefully in this video you'll be able to see a few advantages of using aux tracks instead of buses. But generally speaking, I prefer using aux tracks for two reasons. The first one being saving CPU. And number two is project organization. But before we go any further, I'm just going to play a bit of the song so you can see what we're working with. So there's no vocals in this track, it's just an instrumental rock track which consists of drums, bass, guitar, synths, pads and percussion. So if we go back to the track view right now, as you can see I've got all the instruments grouped into their own folders. If I just open the drums folder, just to stipulate like I sort of mentioned earlier is I exclusively use aux tracks now, I don't use buses at all. So what that means is all my submixing, such as the kick bus, the snare bus, and the toms bus, etc. I use an aux track for that. All my effect sends or parallel compression, such as the snare parallel compression or snare verbs, they're also sent from aux tracks. After I edited this video, I realised that a lot of this info might be a bit useless if you don't know how to make an aux track in Cakewalk. So I thought I'd do a, a short demonstration on how to submix and set up effect sends with aux tracks. So in this project, I have five drum tracks and say we wanted to submix these all to the one place, which by that I mean the one aux track. If you select everything, click the drop down and select new aux track. The aux track then pops up on the right here and just call this drum sub. So as you can see now, all of these channels are pointing to the drum sub and the drum sub is now pointing to the master. If you wanted to set up an effect send for the snare, say a reverb, the same way applies only with the send panes up here. So if you just click the plus button, once again, click new aux track, the aux track pops up next to the snare channel, all you have to do is call this snare verb. And that's the effects then set up. So yeah, similar to buses, but you have the added flexibility of the aux tracks can sit in the track pane and you can just rearrange them wherever you want like so. So yeah, you've got a wee bit more flexibility there. The main part I want to speak about is this folder called master auxes and what that is if i just go back to the mixer view is these are essentially eight aux tracks which receive signal from every single track in the project so what i mean by that is the drum master receives every single drum channel kick snare toms etc every single drum send effect whether that be a reverb or a delay like a snare verb or a kit verb or anything and any parallel processing like snare parallel compression kick parallel compression so on and so forth clean guitar master and trem pick master that's the exact same the clean guitar master receives any clean guitar part any send effect any parallel trem pick is there's a lot of tremolo picking in this song so i've put them all into their own master bus and synth master, pad master, percussion master and bass master are all the exact same thing. Another thing to sort of outline here is that all of these master oxys are sending to another aux track which I've called mix bus and that is on the right here. 
Once the audio gets to mix bus, it goes to another aux track that I've set up called bounce bus. You don't have to worry about that too much at the moment because we will come back to it. But yeah, essentially, all of these tracks are receiving audio. And the reason I do this instead of using buses is because with aux tracks, you can record audio into them and more importantly, you can freeze the audio. Because there's always been this question with Cakewalk and it's, can you freeze buses? And the answer is usually no, but the answer should be yes, but if you use aux tracks. So if you have a look at the Drum Master channel here, I've got a few plugins on this. I've got Gulfos by Sound Theory, Oxford Inflator, Softube Console 1, and IK Multimedia Tier 5 Tape Machine. And for anyone that doesn't know, this plugin and the range of tape plugins from IK Multimedia sound incredible, but they are beyond a joke system intensive. I'm not joking when I say two or three instances of this can see pops, clicks all over your project. And that's with a, quite a sophisticated i7 computer. So without setting my session up in this way, I probably couldn't get much use out of these plugins. But if I go back to the track view now, I'll just close this. I have recorded the drum master aux and I have frozen it. And what that's done is, it's given me some CPU back that I've needed to finish off the mix. Because when the TR5 tape machine is running, I'm not really able to do much more. But what you can do is you can go one further than this and you can set all of your master auxes to record. Just like that. And if you want as well, you can select record arm on the bounce bus. And if you hit record now, what you're going to do is you're going to record all of your submixes or master auxes or stems or whatever you want to call it and print a mix at the same time. My system right now is working okay, but what you could do is you could record all of the master auxes, freeze them, and then print your main mix. And where that would be really good is if you have really intensive plugins on your mix bus, such as another tape machine or some Acoustica plugins. Like this Celestial plugin is pretty heavy on resources, but even a couple of Acoustica plugins might see you run into some pops and clicks. So you, you could be in a position where you really want to use these plugins, but you just can't run them. So what you can do is you can print all of your aux tracks, freeze all of them, archive all the respective folders, and then do your print onto the bounce bus. So that means you can run all these plugins um, and kind of get around the pops and clicks you might be experiencing. But because this is working okay just now, I'm just going to print all of the master auxes and bounce in one fell swoop. So I'll just hit record and I'll skip to the end after they're frozen and stuff and I'll come back. So as you can see, I've recorded every master aux and I've also frozen every master aux. And what that's enabled me to do is plugins such as Gulfos, FabFilter Saturn 2, Black Rooster VLA 2A. All of the plugins on these master auxes are now frozen and they aren't taking up any system resources. So that's brought my engine load down about 30 and the audio processing down about 5%, which is, there's really not a lot going on there. But if we come down to the bounce bus, where we printed a mix at the same time, I'll let you hear that just now, just so you know it sounds exactly as it should. To 
give you an idea that it sounds exactly how the song started at the start, even though we've printed on another track instead of using the, the sort of common export feature. Yeah, I forgot to mention this, but the reason I set up an additional bounce bus track for printing instead of just using the mix bus is that it saves me a step later on. What I mean by this is that the audio travels from the channels into the master aux tracks, then through the mix bus, which has an effects chain, and then to the bounce bus. So the resultant audio that's printed on the bounce bus has been affected by the mix bus chain, which also includes a hardware insert. So there's no need to freeze anything after or do another print. The resultant audio you have on the bounce bus is the final mix. The main reason I like to set my sessions up like this, aside from saving CPU, is that if I print my mixes like this, all I have to do is bump this down a few tracks. And I've already got a track set up called B4 with today's date. That means bounce for the 18th of October 2021. If I put that track in there and archive it, I have every bounce for this project in the one folder. And what really helps me is that if I go back to a session that's maybe a few months old or years old even, this is exactly what I see when I open a session. So I see all the drums, all the bass, all the guitar, all the synths and pads and all the percussion, they're all archived so there's not going to be any crazy CPU spikes when I open anything. All the master oxys are in here, which are obviously my stems as well. They're all frozen, not taking up any CPU power. And more importantly, every bounce for this song is in the project. So the chances of losing bounces are much lower with this sort of method. It sounds daft, but it's really easy to get caught up and just lose a good bounce and think, how do I get that mix back? But if you set things up like this, you'll always have everything. If you want to make a change, say you have a revision to make, all you have to do is, say we want to change something about the bass, all you need to do is unfreeze the track, delete the track, and unarchive the bass folder. You can then open the bass folder and just make any change you want. As you can see inside here, all the tracks are frozen too, but it's really not that hard to sort of go back and make a few changes. Once you make the changes, you just have to repeat the process of record enabling the aux track, record it in, freeze it and archive and you're back to where we were. So yeah, I hope that's been helpful. It's quite confusing trying to speak through this setup. Um, but I hope it's sort of made sense. I might make another video showing you how to set a project like this up from the start if you'd think that'd be useful. If so, just give me a shout. But yeah, if you get any questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you.